Hey guys, welcome to another Final Cut Pro tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create neon titles like this in Final Cut Pro without using any third-party plugins. It's pretty easy to do, but there are a bunch of different steps you need to follow, so stick around and I'll break it down for you step by step. The first thing you're going to want to do is to choose the shot that you're going to add the title to. Dark, nighttime shots obviously work best, and you'll want a clip that was shot using a tripod. You can use a moving shot, but then you need to track all of the titles, and that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. I've got this shot here of an alley at night, which I'll use to show you how to create a neon title. Step one is to add your text. I'm going to use a basic title, which you can grab from your titles menu, or by simply hitting Ctrl T. I'll just adjust the length of that title to match the length of my clip by using the shortcut Alt square bracket. And then I'll come in over here and I'll type neon sign. I'll change the font to neon glow, which is a font I downloaded from defont.com. I'll put a link to that in the description down below for you. I'll increase the size a little bit and then I'll position it here above these dumpsters. I want to make it look like it's on this wall. So I'll first go in here and I'll change my rotation to try and get it to look like it's in the scene here on this wall. What you could do is zoom in just so you can see a little bit more clearly, but also because you can use these lines here to try and line up to the bricks. So let's put it over here, tilt it a little more. Something like that looks good. So let's just go back and fit this to the window. I'll go down to my face settings here for the text and I'm going to keep the color white because the neon sign has these white highlights that normally blow out when you shoot them. So I want to keep the white there. I'll drop the opacity slightly and increase the blur a little bit to about there. The reason I do this is because titles are digitally created and they often look a lot sharper than your footage. So dropping the opacity slightly and adding a subtle blur helps them to blend into your scene a little bit better. Lastly, I'm going to go over to my blend mode and I'm going to change that to add. Step two is to add a glow. So I'm going to add the glow effect by going to my text properties, scroll down to glow and turn that on. I'll click show here so I can see these properties and I'm going to change this color to a more orange color. I kind of want it to match the light in the scene that we have already. So let's go a little more orange and I'll increase the radius and I'll increase the blur. I'll kind of do that until I get a nice glowing look. There we go, that actually looks like it's lit up. Step three is to brighten the glow. I'm going to do that by duplicating this layer you can either copy and paste this layer or a quick way to do it is to hold down the Alt key and just drag and drop a new layer on top. I'm going to rename this top layer to Neon Tube and then I'll hide it using the shortcut key V and I'll rename this bottom layer here to Main Glow. I'll come into my text properties, I'll hide the face and on the glow settings here I'll increase the radius and I'll increase the blur a little bit. Next, I'm going to add a color wheels effect here just to increase the highlights a little bit, just to give it that nice glowing neon look. And then let's enable this top layer so we can see what it looks like together. Coming back to my main glow, I'm going to go over to the film strip here and I'm gonna leave the blend mode set to add, but I'm going to drop this opacity a little bit just so we create a nice intense glow around the neon tubes here. Step number four is to add an ambient glow. In order to do that, I'm going to duplicate this main glow layer by holding down Alt, I'll just drag that below and I'll rename this to Ambient Glow. I'll hide these top two layers for now so we can see what we're working with. And on the Ambient Glow, I'm going to take my Color Wheels plugin off and then I'm going to add a Blur plugin. So I'll come over here to my Effects window and I'll choose Gaussian Blur and I'll drop that onto my title. So I'll drop the Blur amount and I'll increase the Blur Boost just to create more of a spread here. If you go too far, you kind of lose it. So right about there looks good. And if you want this to be a little bigger, you can just increase the scale here, which I'll show you in just a second, but let's first make these two layers active so we can see what it looks like. Let's come over to the glow here and we'll make it bigger. You'll see as I increase the scale, it kind of moves off the frame here, but then all I need to do is bring it back, kind of position it around the sign Somewhere there looks good. Now we've got this nice ambient glow around the sun. If I turn that off and on again, you'll see the difference it makes. See, it just adds that nice little glow around the sun. Step number five is to add a shadow to create depth. 
Normally when you look at these neon signs, because of the tubes and the way that they're mounted to the wall, there is some kind of shadow behind the light. It also helps just to give it a little bit of depth. In order to do that, I'll take this main glow layer here, I'll duplicate that and put it at the bottom. I'll rename it and I'll call it shadow. I'll hide these layers quickly and then we can come in here, delete the color wheels, we don't need that. Let's set the blend mode to normal and now I want to darken this. So I'll come over to my text properties, come down to glow and I'll take this color here. I still want the orangey color so all I need to do is just drag the slider down, kind of get it to a dark orange shadow looking color. Then I'll increase the glow radius and the blur just to create a nice shadow there behind the sign. Let's turn these layers back on. And now what we need to do is select the shadow layer and offset it slightly. So we can drag this and you see if I move this around, we've got the shadow. I can just go and position that so it looks like we've got a little bit of depth behind the sign. Somewhere about there looks good. And that looks pretty realistic to me. I mean, if we look at this in terms of the order we built these layers, let's have a look. We first started with just the tubes. We then added a main glow, which gives it that real neon look. Then we added an ambient glow to give it a bit of light around the sign. And then we added a shadow over here to create some depth. Step number six is to create an off version of the neon light. All the steps so far have shown you how to create the light on version. Now let me show you how to create the light off version. First things first, let's copy all of these layers and paste them over here. We'll select all of these layers, including the footage, and we'll hit Alt G to create a compound clip. I'll call that neon sign on. I'll explain why I select the footage as well in just a second. And for the off version, we're going to go delete the two glow layers and the shadow. I'll select our tube layers and now we want to create a version where this looks like the tubes are there but just off. I'll come over to my text properties here, scroll down and I'll turn face off and glow off and I'll turn outline on. I'll come back over to the film strip here and I'll set my blend mode to color burn. I'll head back over to my text properties and I want to change the color here to a dark orangey tube color. This will be what it looks like when the tubes are off. I'll increase the blur a little bit and I'll increase the width. Okay, that's too much. Let's, let's go 1.3. I'll drop the opacity a little bit here. And now let me explain why when I create a compound clip, I include the footage layer. The reason for that is if I hit Alt-G and create a compound clip without the footage, you'll see how the blending mode changes the way that this text appears on the wall. So I'll undo that. I'll select both the layers, Alt-G for a new compound clip, and I'll call this neon sign off. I'll drag that on top of my neon sign on layer and I'll hide that. Step seven is to make it flicker. I've added this neon light flickering sound effect here and I'm going to alternate between the sign being on and the sign being off to create this flickering effect. Let me play the sound effect back for you so you can hear what it sounds like. So we have some flickering at the beginning here which I'm going to sync my cuts to. So I use my left and right arrow keys to find those points. I'll hit B to activate the blade tool and I'll cut the on clip and the off clip over here at the same point. I'll move forward to the right arrow key again and I'll make another cut. Try not make all your cuts only one frame, alternate them by sometimes doing two frames or three frames just to make the flicker look a little more organic. Once you've made all your cuts, you can come in here and select all the clips where you want the light to be off and hit V. You don't have to turn the layers off below because the footage will cover that, but sometimes it's nice just to get a proper visual representation of when the light's off and when the light's on. If I play that back, this is what it looks like. Now, if you want to grade this entire shot, you can select all of these clips, hit Alt G to create a new compound clip. I'll just call this neon sign. You can come over to your color inspector and grade it the way you like, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just come in and drop a LUT on here. Let's just grab this one, and I might just drop the opacity of this a little bit. Something like that. And if you play that back, this is what the final shot looks like. And that's how you do it, guys. It's a fun little title technique to have in your bag of editing tricks. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to see more like this, then please like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.